Well, this is a little gate um, that was uh, blanked using the, the cold bluing technique and it comes out really well. Um, gearbox is painted and um, the paint is hardening nicely. This is the last bit to do. Um, it's been rubbed down. I Generally, I've had to remove all the paint. But in some cases like this, the paint is really solid and well adhered. So there's no point and it provides a good base. I've had to fill, um, do a lot of filling and a little bit of machining to get that nice and square and flat in there. But yeah, the last bit of blue. That's nice and smooth and dry. So I now need to think about where am I going to put the DRO. Um, I will probably mount it to the wall, but we'll put this on and see where it comes. This is how the um, longitudinal scale is configured from the factory, which means that uh, the reader, the, the lead from the reader comes out there and it's a really tight bend when the carriage is right the way up there. It would be much better if it came out the back because the carriage travel up here is limited by the, um, the tailstock. There's plenty of room up there. Now if you need to, um, it's actually quite easy to change this around. They do provide the facility for that. There's a little plug you take out there and you simply turn this over and put the plug in the other end and put that in that end. I can't do it one handed, but it's as simple as that. Now, when we uh, when we got this, this was touching right next to this, um, and now at least we got a bit of clearance, and the whole thing being closer to the the bed, uh, it's a lot. It's going to be a lot easier to mount, and and it's just going to be neater and less prone to getting damaged. Uh, we'll put the, the carriage on and um, work out how we're going to mount the, the actual reader. But having the lead come out this way makes a lot more sense. It will just curl round and I'll put a, a bracket on the underside so that it can slide through. This is a good example of a, a decent bit of paint. Um, they've even used primer. And the only reason I'm painting this is because the colour match isn't quite the same, even though I've got the, the colour codes, etc. It was a better match on the mill. Um, so, first of all, the pips, they seem to, um, I don't know, they like painting in a sandstorm. Maybe they use the sandblaster as a paint booth, I don't know. But lots of little bits of grit. So first of all, I'll sand those off with a bit of 600 grit, wet and dry, and then use uh, a fine scotch, prime, scotch pad just to make sure the, the surface is completely matte and so you get a good key. Then wipe it down with some uh, IPA or something similar to degrease. Well, I degrease it before I start rubbing down, but finally, just to get anything off. Um, and, and I've had no problems with adherence of, of any, any subsequent coats. Well, I've had the best part of the day working on this. Um, we finally got it moving without catching anywhere. Um, the problem was that the lead screw was actually pointing that way. So, you know, when you pulled this out, it just sprung. Um, you can imagine 
the, the slight, you, you only need a couple of thou for that to be off and it's magnified over that distance. Uh, so it, it's taken a bit of, um, not a bit, a hell of a lot of work because you have to keep taking it off, making an adjustment and putting it back. That's been one of the worst tasks I've had to do because it's just bloody painful and time consuming. But uh, I think we're there. So now I can um, take this off and start to uh, assemble it properly. Everything else um, is all good. Yeah, it's starting to look like a lathe now. This is the small lead screw for the tailstock quill. And I'm guessing that it's got a, um, a couple of uh, thrust bearings in there. Um, and it's clearly got grease in there, or lard or whatever they use. Um, but they seem to have thrown these... Maybe they've got a job lot of little oilers. Um, I wouldn't expect to put oil in there. Um, it's not exposed. I, I would pack it with grease and forget about it. Um, it is odd, though. They they stuck these oilers just everywhere in the most inappropriate places. Um, the, the, the bearings at the end there. And... There's two sets of thrust races, and the oiler is in the centre. The oil is never going to get to the bearings. Well, unless you absolutely put shed loads in, in which case it will drip straight out. Odd. Well, Tower stock is finished. I've done my normal polishing of the aluminium. That will never look as clean. It actually uh, works very smoothly. And I didn't put any oil in there, I just put grease in there. Uh, I can't see me ever using that. Because all happening is the oil will come there. There's nothing to entice the oil to go anywhere near the bearings. That's a different matter. That's useful uh, to, to oil the quill. Just put the nut on. Um, um, that's another job jobs. So next I'm going to turn my attention to the DROs. I've got to drill a couple of holes in the block at the back to take the longitudinal um, scale, uh, the reader head. And I've got to work out what I'm going to do with the cross slide because the fitting of that from the factory was truly awful um, it's a real real bodge uh, i'm probably going to end up having to block holes and redrill stuff which is really not good i was in two minds whether to to actually return the lathe uh, when i looked at how bad that was or at least say give me another carriage trouble with that is that you know, everything's drilled um, on assembly. So the chances are that the gearbox wouldn't fit, etc., etc. So we're going to try and um, you know, make do with what we got and make it work. I'm sure it's possible, just a lot of work. <laughs>